This video is not about hating on isolation exercises. This video is about informing people on how to utilize isolation exercises to their advantage and make themselves aesthetic as fuck. Isolation exercises make sense. You hit a muscle directly and it grows. And it's absolutely true. You hit a muscle with an isolation and it grows. But the problem with isolations is you can't reach your full potential in that muscle through isolations alone. Otherwise, I think everyone would just be doing isolations if they were interested in aesthetics. So, the thing I recommend for beginners is to not even worry about isolations. To begin with, I think you should just focus on your compounds. But don't worry, isolations are gonna come later. Once you progress to heavier weights and you start to build your physique, you're gonna start noticing weak spots or things that you just want to pop. Maybe you want your, your bias to pop a bit or something like that. And that's fair enough. That's when you hit it with an isolation. But there's no point hitting a small ass beginner muscle with isolations in my personal opinion. It's not gonna grow at the rate that it would if you just really focus down on getting your compounds as strong as possible, as quickly as possible. That's how you're gonna become aesthetic as fuck in the shortest amount of time. I guess I should really share my personal training experiences. When I was a younger teen, I kind of just went to the gym every now and then, not really dedicated, not really consistent. I'd fuck around with isolations, and not much would happen. Surprise, surprise. Then a few years I came back and thought, you know what, I'm gonna be really smart about this. Did my research, and obviously compounds is the best way to obtain progressive overload. So I focused on that, and I built my base. I built my foundation. Only now that I've built my foundation have I started to incorporate isolations. So now you're all like, Sean, I built my base. I've got a strong compound body. Well now here's what the fuck you're gonna do. You're gonna pick the muscles that you think look small or you want to pop. This is where your aesthetic choices start to count. You get to choose what you want to be bigger through isolations. Because isolations on a muscle that's already built is gonna make it pop. I don't care what any hippie motherfucker says, it's gonna pop. So now you're like the artisan putting the icing on the cake. You're putting the icing on the bicep. You're putting the icing on, maybe you want bigger quads. I don't fucking know. Maybe you want to do calves. Maybe you're one of those few people who wants to make your calves bigger. But this is a no judgment zone, so you go for that. That's your aesthetic choice. That's your, that's your artistry, man. You have the right to do that. So isolations are an amazing thing. I just don't feel that everyone needs to do an isolation for every muscle. You're gonna have some strong muscles that are just naturally strong, and that are just naturally big. And if you're happy with them, why touch them? Why, why focus on something when you need to focus on other things? You need to focus on the muscles that you do need to bring up, not the muscles that are already good. Unless you really want those muscles to pop, and then by all means, that is your aesthetic choice and you should go for that. Anyway guys, I just want to point out that isolations are the icing on the cake. Believe me, if they could get the whole job done, I think everyone in the gym would be doing them. But look at everyone else, they're all doing compounds. Because compounds are king and isolations are queen. Anyway guys, I'm Blast Natural, thanks for watching.